African ministers are meeting here at Sharm el Sheikh to form a unified front to address the global crisis of climate change. African countries emit the least of greenhouse gas emissions, yet they bear the brunt of the most adverse effects of climate change. Here in Sharm el Sheikh, African meters are meeting on the one umbrella called AMSEN to address loss and damage, mitigation, climate negotiations, and the most importantly, climate reparations. COP27 is branded as a COP for Africa, giving African nations a unified voice to address the harsh effects of climate change it imposes on African states. Officials noted that G20 countries alone emit 75% of global emissions, whilst the global south, particularly Africa, emits only 4%. Ms. Inga Anderson of UNEP mentioned that Adaptation Gap Reports states that at least $300 to $575 billion is needed annually to address Africans' adaptation needs. However, only $19 billion is raised annually. The Egyptian Environment Minister, Dr. Yassine Faroud, who doubles as the COP27 president, gave an update on the state of negotiations at the climate summit. The COP was opened on a time after heavy consultations on the agenda, which were conducted by the presidency prior to the first day of the COP. Egypt managed to include a new agenda item on funding of loss and damage, which is a major breakthrough on that issue. It was decided that the presidency will conduct consultations on six new proposed agenda items. On mitigation, three iterations were issued for the text on the mitigation work program. Parties were not able to finish the technical discussion on that matter, so the presidency will continue the technical negotiations on Monday and Tuesday. Speaking to the Gambia's Environment Minister, Rahi John Manjang, she stated that African countries must form a unified front to register meaningful gains on demanding the fulfillment on pledges by the big emitters. But notwithstanding, looking at the global finance, Africa is accessing only around 3%. So we're trying to put our case to at least grab as much as 10%. But this is becoming difficult because so many bottlenecks are there and we want, we want to concentrate on more on the financing, on adaptation, because this is what is going to give us a good grip to, have a, to build on our resilience and mitigate the near-reach um, consequences. The minister later presided over the meeting with the Gambian delegates of the COP, where issues such as resource mobilization, first common engagement and a pavilion for the Gambian delegates was discussed. Even if we are able to um, redesign our policy patterns, it's, a, it's, it's a, in itself an achievement. If we don't have something that we can police our policy pattern in reference to um, building resilience and accommodating the adaptation measures, then we are nowhere to achieve our economic desires. So it's not the monetary aspect, the monetary aspect of it directly. Indirectly, we can also try to see how best we can build on our weaknesses, if there are any, and see how best we can stand more firm to respond to the climate impacts. And I know we have smart men and women on this uh, uh, table representing the GAMI who are ready to support in that part. The minister proceeded to a bilateral meeting with the chief economist of the International Institute for Environment Development, where discussions were centered on debt relief for Gambia, raising more probabilities for grants. Uh, we just, well, the ministers set out their vision uh, from the president of having uh, debt for climate and nature swaps, where Gambian debt uh, would be reduced on, ex in, on condition that Gambia achieves certain key performance indicators and it has a negotiation with its creditors. So, um, so this is a huge debt burden for the Gambia and also the Gambia is being expected to borrow money for climate change and uh, rather than to receive grants. So this debt relief would be a grant uh, which Gambia can spend on, as I said, on climate and nature. And these climate and nature would be things like renewable energy, things like making agriculture climate resilient, things like looking after the banjul infrastructure to reduce the uh, impacts of the massive floods you had earlier on this year. The Environment Minister was also invited to a high-level panel on climate resilient food systems 
where she outlined the significant breakthrough on food systems the large-scale ecosystem-based adaptation project in the Gambia has registered. Most of our farmers nowadays are using um, non-climate friendly um, chemicals to increase their yields and we cannot sustain that. It's not sustainable for, 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 for our environment. So what are we going to do next? That is why we are having this project supported by UNEP that is supporting communities to change the drives as a climate friendly model in terms of responding to adaptations. We are supporting smallholder farmers into having an enterprise formula that will also give them the appetite to plant trees that have economic gains in terms of supporting the food chain system. Delegates have one more week of deliberations at the climate summit and a host of signed events to engage development partners and stakeholders in climate change related issues. Reporting for GRTS News in Sharm el Sheikh, Egypt, I'm by Ibrahim Chan.